the first day that I went out on the archipelago south of Stockholm, uh, I met Peroka and Leonard early in the morning. We headed out driving through um, beautiful countryside down a lot of roads. I was totally lost as far as where we were going. We got on a small boat. We headed out into the archipelago, and the, the surroundings were just beautiful. I mean, the rocky outcrops, the, so much water, so few people, virtually no other boats, no signs of human habitation, a few cottages. You could tell the people would be there in the summer. Um, and we went out to see the, the eider ducks on these rocky outcrops where they breed, and they were uh, lethargic. They were not defending their nest. Um, there were fewer eggs in the nest than would normally be laid, from what I understood. Um, and when we approached, they would leave the nest, but they wouldn't fly in circles and try to defend their nest from us, which is much more typical seabird behavior when, when any potential predator is approaching the nest. So that, from that aspect, it was, it was frightening to see that in an area that, as far as my experience uh, in working on urban situations with people and pollution, um, I'm used to seeing problems in wildlife where there was a lot of people around, but in an area like this with no people, uh, it, was, it was just frightening. I know, and you don't want to think that that's enough, but it's a changing I think situation right now. I think up some kind of, uh, yeah. not tradition, but I mean to exchange material mm -hmm. over the Atlantic Ocean. It's been a few years since we were out with Tejf and Kolli for the first time. Ja, och just vid det tillfället så observerade vi eh, ett antal fåglar som uppvisade den här typiska så kallade kliniska symptombilden för tiaminbrist. Eh. Vi har lärt oss genom åren att just den här personliga upplevelsen hos människor är, är väldigt stark när man går på eh, för de här förlamade fåglarna som så uppenbart man ser att de är drabbade av en allvarlig sjukdom. Det, det brukar ofta ha en väldigt kraftig effekt. På, på de människor som ser det. Det är först då som ofta som det blir sanning för dem så att säga. We also went and looked at swans and this for me was simply uh, eye opening that we went to see a, a pair of mated swans on their nest and as we approached they they had this hind limb paralysis, which is indicative of thiamine deficiency, and they tried to crawl away from the nest and crawl away from us, leaving their eggs exposed. Um, very sad to see that, uh, but then we went not much distance further to another pair of swans that Peroka and Leonard had been feeding them thiamine enriched bread um, for some period of weeks, and as we approached these swans, they stood up, they stretched their wings out, they were a meter, meter and a half high. I'd, to me, they looked huge. They looked really huge and really aggressive um, and magnificent. And they were not going to let us get anywhere close to their nest. They were totally there to defend their nest. And that was how they should be behaving. It could be like, it could be like, like last night when you asked me, did I want to be the spider in the Scientifically, it wasn't, I didn't, wasn't looking at numbers and data, but I was actually looking at the animals in their environment, so it's hard to convey that with a probability of what I was seeing, but in terms of the personal impact on me, um, to see this syndrome and to see the differences in what happens with thiamine treatment in these animals in the wild, um, was, it was transcendent. It was really a, a, an altering experience for me. And ever since that day, I have offered my advice to Leonard and, and Peroka and the work they're doing. Uh, he and I have never worked together on publications. We don't have any common research projects. But I've just felt compelled in my spare time to uh, look at his data, look at his research, give him advice, and do whatever I can to further um, his work in terms of, of how it gains acceptance so that we as a scientific community can really come to grips with this thiamine deficiency syndrome.